here we sit on the the 21st of March 2001 it's snowing outside second day of spring yes one of many springs you've experienced John let's ask the secret when were you born 6th of September 1924 and what is your earliest memory I think possibly the earliest memory was my father's kept bees all his life and as a tiny tot, he had some nice candid honey. A little way, we lived in the old bungalow in front of Bob's down there now. What, Bob Hacker? Yeah, Bob Hacker. Yep. And he, he had his bee shed just down the garden, or what was the garden then, from the old bungalow. And it was probably the length of this room. And I can remember toddling, toddling down there, and he was cutting out little cubes of this here candied honey granulated honey and it was delicious but mother took the exception to it she she was a much harder than father he was he got a heart of gold but uh, mother was um, more dictatorial and um, regimented this i know on occasions when put in the bedroom or something like that then uh, cry my eyes out and father would come round to the window and he'd pick me out of the window did he really want to take you outside yes <laughs> They had to conform then. We had the discipline in society, which seems to be strangely lacking in many seems aspects. Seems to have lapsed of, into Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When, you, when you toddle around to get your cube of honey, how old do you think you were? Probably three, maybe, I should think. No more than that. In fact, there's a, a picture of me and my brother in the um, Millennium Book. Sitting, sitting underneath, there was cherry trees in full blossom and beehives in the background and we'd been picking dandelions and I can still remember it, there was a mass of dandelions, a beautiful display of dandelions and we'd been picking the heads of dandelions. What were you going to use those for, John? Oh, it was just the pleasure of uh, de decapitating the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> At three years old, who do you think was the oldest person you knew? when? My you grandmother. Undoubtedly, my grandmother, she was quite a tiny woman, but she was a, a formidable one. Yeah. They kept the old Five Bell pub, my, my grandparents. They, they came there in 1900 at the Five Bell pub. I know he got a reference from somebody and they said oh, he wouldn't let the grass grow under his feet. Hmm. Although he kept a pub, he loved to try someone else's beer and the old King William always known as the King Bill, the Lulworth pub that stood almost opposite Lulworth service station now on the other side of the road. Yes. And he would go down there with his donkey and cart. He was a character. And the boys down there, whatever game, they pushed the, unharness the donkey and they pushed the shafts of the cart through a five bar gate and unharness the donkey the other side. And the old fellow could never understand how the donkey could get through the gate and leave the cart behind. <laughs> and, uh, they said that he was often so blind drunk when he came out that they'd load him on the cart, give the old donkey a slap, he knew his way up the Huntington Road or the, the, now the A14 and take him back. He rolled him home on his <laughs> yes. own. If, if your grandmother, now how old was she when she died? 82. And that was in? 1932. So she was born 1850. Yeah. She used to get up quite late in the morning, that was even before I went to school, get up quite late in the morning, probably 10 and a half past. And she loved cheese and onion for her breakfast. And she cut it up in little tiny dices, these bits of cheese and onion. And we'd stand there like a bird with a mouth open. And <laughs> that was delicious as long as it was someone else's. A little bit of tiny little pieces of yeah. cheese and tiny little pieces of onion. And yet uh, it was wonderful. Uh, it's, it's childlike, I suppose. But the connection you have with a lady who was born in 1850 she would have had some some understanding of the old empire. Do you remember conversations, or do you remember anything she actually said to you? She probably taught me the alphabet and, and taught it backwards as well. Z Y X and W V U T S and R Q P O N M and L K J I H G C P A F E D C B A. Please, John. And do you think she taught you that? <laughs> yes, I'm sure she did. I think there's probably nobody in the village that could do that. <laughs> sure. My father was wounded on the Somme. He felt his leg go from under him. He said they'd softened up the enemy lines for several days before with all, all the howitzers and field guns and everything. And the top brass said, oh, there won't be any Germans there. You'll be able to go straight forward. He said, we went over the top. Jerry's were there waiting for us. 
and he said he felt his leg go and he tried to crawl back to his own lines. He fell into a trench of barbed wire. He said, I don't know how long I was in there, but he eventually extricated himself and he crawled back to a dugout. And that was several hours later because there was German prisoners in, the, in this dugout. And he said, Tommies were running along the, the bank at the top and they kept pointing their rifles and saying, you so-and-so's these German prisoners. He said there was several, one, you're only about 19 at the time. And he said there was several old enough to be his father. They were crying like children, these German prisoners. Really, really. And he said there was, he was trying to get his field dressing out, but he was so weak through loss of blood and shock, he couldn't. And he said it was a young German that saw what he was trying to do. So he took his own out and put on top of it. He really? So there was... The there German was, helped to save his life, Absolutely, perhaps. absolutely. Sharpnell took the top off his leg, on, and that remained open and separating until 1970. He was invalided back to Bristol. He used to do a lot of photography, developed his own films before the First World War, in the dark room and that. And he became the official photographer there for this uh, hospital at Clifton in Bristol. Did he? When he recovered sufficiently, yes. he kept in touch with the old matron. I always remember she used to send him a box of elaborate chocolates at Christmas. We'd never seen anything like it in our house. And he always sent her a can or a tin of honey, about seven or fourteen pound tin of honey, and, and they, they exchanged those for a, what from nineteen uh, seventeen eighteen, I suppose, when he was in uh, hospital there, right up till about nineteen the late seventies. I think he was the life and soul of the party. He um, had his jokes, and he was, he was a wonderful fella. Mm -hmm.